Once upon a time, there was a beautiful young Indian princess. She volunteered to become an English spy against Hitler's Third Reich. She was eventually captured, tortured, and executed. She did not live happily ever after. So that other people could. And it's important to know her story, because though like many warrior poets before her, uh, though she is dead, she still speaks. Here's a glimpse at her story. All right, guys, real cool story. Her name was Madeline, or at least that was her code name. Her real name was Noir Inayat Khan, and she was li literally, technically, a princess in that her father descended from a sultan, so she wasn't like living the life of luxury in a palace like Jasmine and Aladdin with her pet tiger, Raja. That would have been cool. And man, I would love a pet tiger. Anyway, her background was an incredible kind of eclectic mix where her mother was an American, her father was an Indian Muslim who was of the Sufi sect, which was in Islam, it was more of a mystical and very pacifistic uh, sect. She was born in Moscow, she was raised in France, and then she moved to England later. So you can see all the colliding cultures that made up this gal named Madeline. She was a gentle soul from day one, which meant, you know, she kind of, she was really into the pacifistic teachings of her father. So even when she got into real dangerous stuff later, she wasn't interested in carrying a gun and she just was absolutely against taking life, even though she was caught up in this dangerous game of World War II and she was risking her life. She wasn't ready to take the lives of others. She also played the harp. She wrote children's books. And when World War II broke out and she saw the horrors of the Third Reich, she wanted to get involved. So really, truly, she ended up volunteering. She was become a radio operator, which was a very, very dangerous job. And as she was on one track to go fulfill that, and she was actually trained as a radio operator, she was inducted. She was in recruited by the Special Operations Executive in London. This was a surprise to her, and she didn't even really know what she was getting into. But once the jig was up, she started going into this type training where she was becoming, uh, sh she got trained in very, very dangerous clandestine operations as an English spy. The life expectancy for a radio operator behind enemy lines and Nazi occupied anywhere was just a couple months. So really, this was kind of a suicide mission that she did basically for out any really real pay, any real reason except serving the higher purpose of loving her country, loving her fellow man, even though it, it most likely meant she was going to die. This brave woman, Madeline, you're an inspiration. So the training Madeline went through was pretty intense, rigorous. First off was the job of radio transmitter, which meant she had to have all these just different kind of codes and secret ways that she could communicate. Like, for instance, if she was being forced, she was captured and forced to give a radio transmission. She had special codes that she had to sign off with so that they would know, hey, the jig is up. Madeline's, I have been captured. And so all that kind of stuff that went into her training, but also kind of firearms training and evading detection. And eventually, if you're caught by the Gestapo, hey, here's how they interrogate. And so she has to go through through all that stuff as well, which would become in handy because eventually she would be captured by the Gestapo and tortured. So she had to resist all that, which would be a nightmare. It was reported that when she went through her training, the instructors who were tasked with interrogation and kind of the mock torture of her, just the frightened expressions on her face, just like undid them. They could they really just uh, couldn't handle just the, the beautiful... Uh, be this beautiful girl, naive and terrified in front of her. So a lot of the instructors weren't about having her in the field, didn't think she was cut out for it. Uh, against their judgment, England was very hard up for radio operators. And so Madeline, for better or worse, uh, whether people agreed with it or not, she was dropped behind enemy lines in Nazi-occupied France, where they were desperate for radio operators. When I say dropped, they literally parachuted her in. So... Way to go, Madeline Airborne. She began resuming operations in that area. There was very few radio transmitters that were working there. All of them, one by one by one, would get picked up and captured until she was finally the only radio operator that was sending any intelligence from France 
uh, into for the Allied forces. So that became a huge, huge deal. Here is a war raging around him, which was largely conducted and won by intelligence. Without intelligence, you're flying blind. World War II was won by intelligence operations. I mean, obviously, boots on the ground, sacrifice, sacrifice of soldiers. But before that could happen, I mean, you're you're all it just would have been a slaughtering without good intelligence. So it was an intelligence driven war and she was providing that she lived past her life expectancy, even though alone. And she just kind of kept hopping around France, evading the Gestapo. Even after, uh, England's kind of calling her back, she says, no stays on later. And eventually she just kind of disappears when she was captured. She would be interrogated by the Gestapo. And we have reports of all this stuff where she was stubborn. She wouldn't give him any information despite being tortured. So holy cow, this gentle and sweet Madeline, who all the instructors thought would fold, is resisting Gestapo, uh, not giving up information. I mean, she's going to give up. So everybody breaks uh, eventually. But I'm just saying her legacy in the re reports after the war that came out of the Nazi officers that were talking about how stubborn she was and how all they just, she wouldn't give up any information was quite remarkable. She would eventually be killed in a concentration camp. Uh, her last word was supposedly, uh, we believe, was liberte, uh, liberty. She was posthumously given the George Cross, which is the highest award a civilian can get from the British government, and she remains a living legend. So uh, men and ladies alike, look at Madeline, this woman against all odds, who was a stud, a warrior poet to the last, and will be made stronger because of her example. If you guys are interested in other videos where I cover other warrior poets of the past, go ahead and check below in the description. Also, I've got a warrior poet reading list in my Amazon on store. I'll put that link below. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, leaders are readers. And so, uh, let's grow. TV isn't going to do it. Read and that'll be great. I'm reading so slow. I feel like a hypocrite. Even when I say that I am reading, I'm just reading slowly because of all this stuff. But, uh, anyway, train hard, train smart guys. I'll see you next time.